Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Moral. Denise. Renee Small. Hope you guys are enjoying the lovely heat wave. There's a song by a group called Heat Wave. Don't remember what the name of that song is. It's uh, it's a, it's um, it's eight minutes past uh, ten UK time. Uh, if you can hear me well, say hi. Uh, if you can't hear me well, say bye. <laughs> um, just want to take this opportunity to wish everybody a wonderful day, and I hope you've been well. Hope you've been enjoying the the lovely. Uh, the lovely weather i think it has been fantastic i think i was completely drained today drained today to the point where i had a lovely long sleep you know and i said golly gee i forgot that i need to do this facebook live tonight just to get things in motion as much as possible the week that was and the week that is is my topic today the week that was and the week that is and we're good to hear as well from yourself what was your week like? The week that was and the week that is. What are you expecting for this week? Yeah. I'm just doing my normal um, share, like, you know, share this video as well if you can. Good evening, Paulette. Well, you know, last week was, um, it seemed like whenever the sun shines and it's um, really exciting and it's very lovely, there seemed to be this element of crime on the streets of London, or as they say, in the national perspective of the UK. Um, I'm not going to say what we tend to always say is uh, what's happening, what's happening with our young people. That's, uh, that's a typical narrative, which I won't want to get back into, you know, because uh, I think uh, I think the answer to everything, really, I don't know the answer, really. I don't know if you know the answer. But without a doubt, one of the key things is that um, young men, kids, 13, 15, 16, 17, are now killing each other. Uh, Donald Trump recently said at the NRA, uh, Rifle Association, he used, he used an example that the UK is... Uh, a key hospital in the UK is like a war a war zone to a certain extent but I do recall when we had the recent uh, spate of crime um, where it reached up to 50 where they said uh, New York uh, or London has actually surpassed New York then one trauma surgeon the trauma surgeon said that uh the UK actually, and, and in the hospital, is like a, 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 a war, a war zone. He said it. He said it. And what he said is that you got 13, 15 year old children that are looking younger. He said it. He said it. Okay. Um. So 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 therefore, the, the key thing, really, without a, without a doubt, is that we need to actually tackle this, tackle this from different factors as much as possible and all I'm actually doing really is is just simply just casually just talking about it casually talking about it 
but to keep it in the, the forefront. You know, there's a Brexit defeat from the House of Lords, something I'm going to touch on. I'm going to touch on Donald Trump withdrawal from the Iran country deal. Just touch them basically. I'm going to touch on Canaways in the news. I'm going to touch on Donald Glover. Charles Gambido. This is America. Yeah, I'm going to touch on that. I'm going to touch on that. And what I'm doing is just setting the stage for a couple of these. Um, to come back at a later time and to dissect it. There's another election which is going to be in the air. And that is my local MP, Heidi um, Alexander. She has stepped down. She's going to be Deputy Mayor, Deputy Mayor of London. So there's going to be another by-election. So just when I thought it was going to be time to relax and chill after an election, we're going to be back on the street again campaigning for uh, a local MP in the area. A few people said, Silver, why it's not you? Well, I said, anything can happen. Maybe next time, next time around or so. Um, so so these, these are some of the, the, the key... Um, thing which I want to speak about and and for those on Instagram land as well that's that's the whole essence of things and please like and share this video as well as much as possible and um, that would be mightily appreciated yeah so I uh, just want to thanks for the persons who are on and uh, please share this video What they're saying is that, ladies and gentlemen, the wave of violence continues with further bloodshed in London. Yeah, the wave of violence continues with further bloodshed in London. London was a place whereby, well, normally they say London is burning. Um, London Bridge is burning down. London Bridge is burning down. Is that what is happening? You know, we I saw the, the mother of one of the young men who died and and uh what, what the what the mother was doing, she was actually uh let me just do something here. The mother was actually cleaning the blood off the ground of her son. And and it, it is one thing to bury a child, but it's another thing to actually be cleaning the blood off the street, you know, where your child has died. And it is something very serious, ladies and gentlemen. I have people that I'm speaking to at times who worry about their children, um, worry about their sons becoming teenagers, getting caught up into something. We're now in the summer. The summer period is about to begin now. And you're going to have these long weekends. And you're going to have this um, period. I don't know. It's like, like when the sun is shining for some reason, when the sun is shining, apparently somehow... It, it it gives maybe this ethos and this drive or so for um for for young men or, or young people to somewhat get a bit um completely uh uh carried away. Let me see make sure let me make sure that I'm not getting carried away here while I'm looking for something here. You know? Getting carried away in the whole process. Right? Wave of violence sweeping the country continued in London on Tuesday. This is Tuesday. As two teenagers were stabbed in separate incidents. The police said one victim in his late teens was stabbed in the leg during an evening rush hour incident near Woolwich Arsenal Station, South East London, following reports of a fight. You may have heard as well again that there was some acid being shown on people or so in a bus. You may have heard again, I think at, uh, at a gay nightclub or so, uh, acid was thrown at persons. You know? And it's very interesting because I recently was at Selco. Selco is one of those companies that you buy these um, particulars, um, um, building um, stuff for drainage and all those sort of things. And I actually took out, bought uh, a couple of acid for some drainage thing or whatever like that. 
and they asked my age. <laughs> uh, they were just kidding, you know. Of course, hi, Paula, how are you doing? Of course, you know, I, I look like 16, 17. So I was with a, a elderly gentleman who was doing some work, who was doing some work at my property. And uh, and they say, is he your child? <laughs> and because uh, I wanted the acid. And, and I was saying, why they asked my age? Of course, they were, they were jiving. Um, but uh, I think what has happened now because of the whole acid thing now, they're asking people their age and they're scrutinizing the persons who actually um, buy acid, you know. So, so yeah, and, and um, yeah, so I put it in my garage, of course, you know, this is for some drainage, heavy duty stuff. So it, it, it's a very serious thing which is out there, you know. You know <clears throat> so what we have now is that a man has been arrested on suspicion of possessing an offensive weapon less than two hours earlier. Police in West London were called to the embankment, taking them to a teenager with a non-life threatening stab wound to his arm. Um, it follows also, ladies and gentlemen, a bank holiday weekend of bloodshed, which saw a number of shootings and stabbings. Right? A 13-year-old boy was innocent victim. You notice the, you know the ages that I'm talking about. The ages. Listen to the ages. 13-year-old boy was an innocent victim as he was shot in the head head while walking down the street with his parents in Harrow with his parents I heard that the other guy who, who, who got killed and um, and his mother was crying and the mother who was cleaning apparently I understand that he was sent to Jamaica or sent to the Caribbean or whatever like that to get away from um, from some threats or so there's a lot of beef going around these are some of the terms that they use you know um, with, with young people the level of tolerance, the level of um, engagement in dealing with issues is so lacking. The What they said is, the youngster was hit by the shotgun pellets as a 15-year-old was attacked around 1.15pm on Sunday in High Street, Wilston. We're not talking about Jamaica, we're not talking about USA, we're not talking about Chicago. We're talking about London town. We're talking about the United Kingdom. We're talking about the reality as much as possible. This is not a negative news. It's not a negative discussion. This is about a real discussion. You know, I saw some bikers on Sunday um, over the holiday. Uh, no, uh, yesterday, bank holiday, Monday, some bikers, they were in Catford. Um, these were some um, young black men, um, you know, maybe middle age, you know, and stuff like that. Maybe in their late 30s, 40s. And they were going on this massive bike thing out of London. And one of the things I, I saw and I said, hang on a second, let me have a quick chat with these guys and let me have a quick uh, uh, rapport with them. And someone just to ask them questions like, um, why do you do this? And uh, is there anything in this that someone can use to empower young men, young kids, young children or so? People don't like the word kids, young children, young men, in the teenagers as well. Because sometimes idle hands is something which um, can be used for creating bad fashion, you know? And there's a turn your hand into fashion, but sometimes idle hand, sometimes as a negative, um, what should I say, repercussion if one doesn't know what to do with their idle hands. So, so these guys got there and, and um, they, they went out there on the bike, boom, boom, boom. And one of the unfortunate things they said is that, of course, young men, young people can come along, but sometimes they're not insured because these bikes are high powered and stuff like that and not, in not insured. Um, but anyhow, that is just something which, which I saw there. But if we check on the the, the trend of, of what happened, is it, that um, it's over 60 now since this year of killings in London that is known, that is accounted for. A combination of knife and, and stabbing. Uh, they said in Warm Street, South, South, Southwark, Saturday, May the 5th, Rhinum Ainsworth Barton. Age 17. Killed. Yep. That was Saturday, May the 5th. Warham Street, Southwark. Just a stone throw away from where I live. Ainsworth. Barton. Age 17. Killed. Hi, Rosemary. How are you doing? Um, Sunday, May the 6th. 13-year-old boy. Injured. 15-year-old boy. Injured. May the 6th. That's reality. Monday, May the 7th, 30 year old man injured. That's at New Cross. 
Sunday, May the 6th, Lewisham. 22-year-old injured as well. Right? Scotland Yard said the older boy suffered injuries caused by a number of shotgun pellets. Minutes later, police were alerted to the second boy injured nearby. Both teenagers suffered non-life-threatening injuries and the younger one had been released from hospital. 39-year-old man arrested on the evening of medicine in connection with the incident has been released on the investigation. The Rhinesworth Barton was fatally shot in Southwark on Saturday. The 17-year-old rapper and aspiring architect, so much potential, his mother said, as she tearfully told of her handsome boy. Right? And they say Rhinesworth death was one of the latest in a spate of violent crimes in the capital as police investigate more than 60 alleged murders so far this year. And it goes further, not just, not just in London. Two men died in stabbings in Liverpool and Luton during the bank holiday weekend. What is this thing about bank holiday weekends? Where time people should be enjoying themselves, right? And what they say, following a home office post-mortem, the victim of a fatal incident in Hanover Street, Liverpool, was being formally identified as a 20-year-old Fata Warson from the Cardiff area. Stabbed. Liverpool City Centre. 43-year-old man was stabbed in Perivale, northwest London on Sunday night after a dispute about driving. Dispute about driving. See, that's the thing sometimes. One has got to choose their battles sometimes. One has got to choose how you engage. I mean, many of us have had situations whereby somebody has bad drive us or anything like that. I always say, somebody always gave me this... Um, 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 good advice if someone bad drive you and you're getting angry or whatever like that or getting annoyed just chill for a bit relax for a second and you'll be very surprised that person will drive on and they'll be out of your life and there's a hundred percent chance that you'll never ever see them again because you do not know the disposition of anyone you do not know the disposition of someone that you may um, um, get into some sort of argument on the road. One of the things that I do when I'm driving, and if someone may be a, a bad drive by mistake, you know what I mean? Not that you deliberately bad drive, but you made a bad move and they're looking angry or so. You just say, thank you, thank you. How are you? You know, you just give them a little hi, you know what I'm saying? Sorry, you know? And even if, even if they are wrong or something like that, a, a, a soft answer turn it away wrath as much as possible. It's about survival at the same time. It's about survival and it's about living. Living your life and it's about survival. I mean, one night I was driving and uh, next to me there were some guys, you know, yeah, some black guys, you know, and uh, they were looking mean, you know what I mean? I said, I said, oh, you guys look so serious, you know what I'm saying? You know, smile, man. They play some reggae music, you know? <laughs> and they just burst out laughing, you know what I mean? I said, yeah, 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 you know what I mean? And stuff like that. But just having that sort of engagement with them, you know what I mean? And it sort of diffused certain things because, you know, you know, you drive up and they come and look at you, you know what I mean? And things like that. So I'm looking at you and you just look back at them and just sort of, of course, you have to choose how you engage and just having this rapport. And it just diffuses certain things sometimes. Because as I said, you know, um, but what is it? Dispute about driving. A 43-year-old was tapped in Perivale, northwest London, on Sunday night after a dispute about driving. Right? Three people were injured, and this is the one, in a noxious substance assault following an altercation between two groups in Shakewell Lane, Hackney, East London, 5.20 a.m. on Sunday. What's going on? It's not, it's not, this is not just something about um, um, black and black issues with young boys or so. Like that. This, is, this is an epidemic which is happening now whereby people are not any more uh, tolerant. Society is not tolerant. Society is not tolerant to other views. Yeah, you know where I'm going. Society is not tolerant to other perception. Everybody be got to shut things down. Shut down that view. Shut down that lie. Shut down that person. You know? In law, there's the thing called alternative dispute resolution. Ways how people can come together and try to have resolution. 
we all have been there in some time. Sometimes in debt or something like that with other persons. And sometimes another person have to come into the play to sort of resolve it. It doesn't have to reach the point of a crisis proportion. And, and that is what is happening. The lack of tolerance as much as possible. The lack of our children are, are reared in their home. You know, with their parents. Um, sometimes we we guilty. Sometimes we shout at our children sometimes. Instead of sometimes engaging with them, sometimes when the pressure is on, and and it and it feeds, we see politicians as well. At times, those from the top, I think in Jamaica recently they showed two politicians having almost like one was saying, "Come outside, come outside." You know, the House of Parliament, and they said, "Come outside, come on, come outside, come outside, no? come touch a button, touch a button." No? <laughs> you know, you've seen in some different countries where they're having fights. You know, you see where the lack of tolerance. You see where adults are actually angry and cursing and all those sort of things. Person with different views, it it it, it replicates itself all over Facebook. Then, but then you've got to ask yourself this question: Who do the children look at? Who are they looking up to? Who are they watching? Are they watching you? Are they watching me? Are they watching their their mates? Who do they spend more time with? What is the message that you're sending? We all have a responsibility in our spheres of influence as to how we actually address these different things. You know, you're going further. Just before 6.30 p.m. on Sunday, police were flagged down by a member of the public in New Cross Road, Stone Show from where I live, South East London, where a 22-year-old man was suffering from gunshot wounds. In a Fort Bank holiday weekend shoot in the capital, a 30-year-old man, who have been working as a delivery driver, was targeted. Police were called at 4.50 p.m. on Monday to a shooting in John Williams' clothes. New Cross, South East London, Scotland Yard said, these are, not, these are not like late in the midnight hour sometime. They're like early hours of the morning. This is brazen. This is blatant. This is mid, middle of the day. Victim was treated at scene before taken to hospital. His condition is not believed to be life-threatening. Another shooting taking place in Vale Street, Clayton, Great Manchester, police said, man in his late team with his friends when he was shot in the leg, shot before 2.45 p.m. on Monday. P.m. on Monday. Taken to hospital for treatment. To serious injuries. I'm not going to say what is going on. What do you think is going on? I think we all know what is going on. It's nothing new to a certain extent. But I think the question is, what is not happening to make the change? Or is it the same thing which is happening, but it is only being broadcasted, only being reported? You know? Uh, the, the, there have been a few marches um, from Lewisham to, I think, Brixton, and they meet together, church praying. There have been various marches when the spirit of crime is happening. Um but nothing is actually changing. You know, I kid you not. I, I said that one of the things that while not wanting to let it look like narratives only about... <laughs> yeah, thanks Yolanda. Um, um, it, it, it's not, not just about um, the, 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 the different marching also as much as possible, but it's all about as well the whole aspect of what is the solution. I, and I still have it in, in mind, and I still have it all pinned down to do these discussions with uh, various persons in regards to how, how do we actually um, assist in the process? What, 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 what can we all do individually of ourselves? What can I do individually of ourselves? Uh, what sort of influence that we have of ourselves as much as possible. I saw um, Dwayne Brooks. Dwayne Brooks um, who was with Stephen Lawrence when he died. Uh, Dwayne Brooks ran for the mayor of Lewisham. Fantastic achievement, I must say. I, I, was, I was privileged to be at the verification of the count where I saw um, people voting for Dwayne Brooks. I think he got over 5,000 votes. 
Uh, it is good when you go to a polling station, uh, when you see the voting section and you see your name being ticked. You know, actually, I need to do a, a five minute video thanking the persons who voted for me at the recent elections. It is good when you see your name being ticked. It's good when somebody actually took that time, go to a polling station and mark the X beside your name. The X beside Silver and City. I, I was looking at Dwayne Brooks um, because he is in the same area. And I was watching his, uh, his, his um, what should I say, the, the different votes for him. I saw the, some who voted for him as first choice, some voted for him as second choice. But what I saw there was a seed. What I saw was a seed being planted. What I saw was, um, if you don't stand for something, then you stand that anything will happen. And it was a pleasure just watching um, Dwayne um, putting himself forward and seeing people voted for him. Because Dwayne never drive as much as possible to somehow um, dealing with the scourge of crime in the city, especially in areas of Lewisham, as much as possible. Many people have a drive, but what they need also in their hand is a power, the power to make that change. Right? The power right now is in the hands of the mayor. The power right now is in the hands of the Home Office. The power is in the hands of the government as much as possible. But there's another fundamental power which, which, um, which, which, which need to um, actually take place. And, and that fundamental power also is in the hands of the parents. Right? The parents hold a fundamental power. Now, Joe Aldred, and I'm going to see if I can find, find um, some solutions that he put out there. Joe Aldred, who is um, a senior gentleman, Bishop Joe Aldred, he set out some, some things which can be done. And I'm going to leave on those seven solutions that he, he put out there. One thing is that young people need support, guidance and opportunities to excel. The older generation owes to the younger to the benefit for us all. I'm going to find something which he wrote, if I can find it. And, and I believe it was very powerful. Um, this was yesterday. Ta, ta, ta. Ah, here it is. Yes, this is this is what he said. I'm I'm gonna close this segment on this. What he says that yet another weekend of violence and death. Sixty death in London alone so far this year. Some say we need to pray more. Because prayer changes high over there in Instagram land. The topic is the week that was and the week that is. Um, some say we should march and protest more. Some say the police should increase stop and search. This morning on TV, a criminologist said, we need to deal with the pervasiveness of violence in society as a social ill of which youth gangs is a manifestation. He recommends a public health approach, not a criminality-led one. Black churches have come to the fore with strategy meeting for prayer and discussion. And he said the report was published in 2008 with several recommendations. And he said, something must be done in the current call. But what? What needs to be done? Here are a few what he said. Government needs to toughen its approach against violence, including gun and knife violence. Why? What do you think about that, ladies and gentlemen? Government needs to toughen its approach against violence, including gun and knife violence. Two, families need to assume responsibility for minors caring for disciplining and teaching them sound morals. Three, extending families to become guardians with community elders coaching and guiding youngsters. Four, the black community, including the black church and other faith communities, to band together to offer social, economic and political opportunities to younger people as a better way than illegal lifestyles. 5. Profile successful young people and elders who achieve by world some hard work and application of their God-given talents as alternative to the fatalism of get rich quick or die trying. 6. Replace homeless hopelessness with hope through hard work and thrift. Seven, churches, particularly black Pentecostal ones, to stop projecting magical, no effort, but prayer solutions 
to intricate life challenges. Replacing that with a biblical, by the sweat of your bro, you eat bread. Yeah? And he said, these points are not cures all by itself. Just a few humble suggestions going forward alongside others already on the discussion and in action. We must face the future as a community, narrow and abroad, taking ownership of possible solutions to the seemingly intractable challenges of gang violence and death in our communities, envision a time when our people, young and old, live better lives. Ladies and gentlemen, that is um, seven points which has been put forward for Uncle Joe Aldred. Um, you may have seen a video I did of him when I was at the prayer breakfast for the Jamaica 55 years of um, independence. Um, you can scroll through on the Silburn TV uh, um, YouTube channel and you can see that as well. Um, so therefore, so that's Joe actually putting some point out there. So ladies and gentlemen, we have this epidemic. We have this issue in regards to um, um, knife crime uh, as much as possible. And it, it is something that, that needs to be addressed. And we all play a part of the solution. I'm not going to labor on this now. Um, as much as possible because there's more other topics there's more other key things um that that is out there that has a part to play in the whole scheme and the whole vision and the whole picture of these things and yes brexit brexit i've not spoke about that too much for a while but brexit is something which is happening out there which is still out there you got the wind rush factor still which is out there we'll come back again on that another time but guess what theresa may the prime minister Got another bloody nose in regards to the House of Lords. Uh, the pairs vote to keep UK in the EEA as 83 Labour pairs defy orders to abstain as it happened. Right? The House of Lords vote against specified March the 29th, 2019 as Brexit Day. If you know Brexit Day is the day when by the UK will officially leave the UK, which was deemed as 29th of March. But they vote against that. And many questions now is being asked. And Nigel Farage is also pushing this. And a petition is going around to get rid of the House of Lords. Because they are completely going against the democratic will of the people. It is put, it is perceived as well. But then sometimes another argument is that you need the House of Lords to somewhat keep a check on the elected representative. But then the other argument to that is how can on an on elected body keep a check on the elected body shouldn't the elected body bodies keep a check on each other that is why you got a vibrant and strong opposition the uk now have a vibrant and strong opposition under the leadership of jeremy corbyn make no doubt about that there's no doubt about that there's no question about that there is an effective um opposition in lewisham council where i'm at where 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 Labour wiped the, clean, the, the slate clean, and they took away the only green which was in the uh, council seat. There were fifty three before, and one green. They got all the seats now. There are fifty four councillors in Lewisham Council, right? Therefore, there is no opposition, <laughs> right? That is what you call a, a chamber where there is no opposition, where they can just. Do whatever they want because there's nobody to stand against them. Now, what is going to be required in a situation like that is good, sound thinking, independent minded Labour councillors. Well, the present government is not in a position where they can run things through. They have to somewhat engage with the opposition and with the strong opposition of Jeremy Corbyn. Right. So the peers have voted. And this is what they've voted for an amendment to the EU withdrawal bill saying that remaining in the European Economic Area, which is the EEA, should be a government Brexit negotiating objective. Right. And this, ladies and gentlemen, and if you're following the world politics of the day, it is a 13th defeat the government has suffered on the bill in the Lords and probably the one that does most to challenge the government's Brexit plan because it is designed to keep the UK in the single market. There are many arguments for against it. And you must have heard Boris Johnson actually making some swiping um, statements against the, the number 10. Um, people are saying he actually challenged the Prime Minister in that respect. But actually the Prime Minister said, I stand behind my Foreign Secretary and I have utmost confidence 
in my foreign secretary. But if you recall earlier, the Prime Minister said, I have my utmost confidence in my home secretary, Amber Rudd. You must have heard many former Prime Ministers say, I have much utmost confidence in my XYZ or whatever like that. And the next thing they resign. But I don't think that's going to happen Boris Johnson. He's so much of a key player in the world Brexit and a key player in holding the present cabinet and the present government together as much as possible. Because a majority of the country, in the sense, and more of the Conservative Party, voted for Brexit. And also the, the Conservative Party is also mindful of the UKIP backup and, 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 and support which has been happening because of the, the fallout of the of UKIP. And as you can see with the recent elections, unfortunately, the wind rush and all the different sort of things um, did not somewhat dent the conservative um, position to a certain extent. Okay? So that is what is happening. Um, so, 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 you know, that, 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 that is something there which one has got to follow. The bill will go back to the Commons quite soon where the government will try to reverse most are all of the Lord's defeat, and certainly this one, but this will create a major headache for Corbyn, who has refused to commit Labour to keeping the UK in the single market, even though polls suggest this option is favoured by 87% of the Labour Party members. Right? And the other news on the political scene in the UK is whereby Labour MP Heidi Alexander will quit the House of Commons to be Sadiq Khan, Deputy Mayor for Transport, setting in motion what could be a fierce battle for a safe London seat. Heidi Alexander is my MP. I know her very well. Um, she's been very supportive of the initiatives that my team and other us have done in the neighborhood watch. Um, she she come to lots of the meetings. And uh, listen, I'm a member of the Conservative Party, but I believe in responsible politics. Right? Um, there's something I speak about, responsible politics, whereby you don't just um, oppose for opposing sake. Oh, you're not tribalistic. I'm not in that tribalistic thing. I have utmost respect for Heidi Alexander. Um, you know, and I, I've seen where she has actually done work. You know, um, you, you got MPs in, on both sides of the frame, Labour, Conservative, that don't work. But she does work. She quit the House of Commons to be Sadi Khan, Deputy Mayor of Transport. And what is going to happen in the first battle? Or what is going to be the issue is momentum. Ladies and gentlemen, I leave you with that term, momentum. You can figure that out and what's going to be the mother of elections in the South just after this one here. And many people were asking me, uh, somebody said, Silver, somebody next me said, did you know that Heidi Alexander resigned? Are you going to stand? And uh, <laughs> I said, I said, I said, I, I, I said, yeah, don't know about that, you know? Um, so so that, that's that's the situation there with Heidi. But I, I've got to know, I've never got to swing across because I said the week that was and the week that is. Um, you know, a lot of things have been happening in, in America as well. And I'm going to swing quickly on Trump. <laughs> Trump factor. Trump pulls out of US. Um, um, <laughs> Trump pulls out of US. Man, that is what lots of people do. Trump pulls out of US. <laughs> Trump pulls out of US. Maybe people might just grab that, grab that there and say, Trump pulls out of US, you know? <laughs> no, Trump pulls US out of break with European allies with Iran Contra deal. Yes? And many people say that the only reason this is, is because of the fact that, um, uh, hi, hi, Tracy Twins, good evening, how are you? It is because of Obama, right? And many people of the view is that. Anything that Obama was successful at, Trump will go completely against it, right? And uh, so what he has said is he is withdrawing the U.S. from the Obama era nuclear agreement with Iran. I mean, Donald Trump has opposed this from day one, even when he was not even running as much as possible. He was saying this was like a sellout, you know, calling it decaying and rotten. He said the deal was an embarrassment to him as a citizen. He went against advice from European allies, even Boris Johnson. We thought that Boris Johnson had an influence on him. Two, two blondes, not going to say dumb blondes, two blondes. Um, he said he would reimpose economic sanctions that were waived when the deal was signed in 2015. Right? He's going to waive that. He's somewhat reneging on a plan. And this is it about politics. You know, 
They always say that the king is dead. Long live the king. When Queen Elizabeth passed away, you know, and if she is still the queen, they're going to say the queen is dead. Long live the king. Why? Because Charles would next be the king. Right? So once the king is dead, long live the king. Once a government is out, long live the government. They always say you vote out the government, but guess what you get? The government. You vote out the government, you get the government. You get the same things sometimes happening the same way at the same time. You vote out the government, you get the government. The king is dead, long live the king. Right? And so therefore, these policies somewhat, which has been put together by former leaders, um, some can be carried on or some can be revoked. And it's unfortunate sometimes where such is revoked because it puts the, the government or the country in question as to their credibility whereby nothing is static. Hi, Adrian. Good evening. And, and as well, even in Jamaica, what we're seeing a situation whereby the, the present prime minister said, this is my plan, this is my vision for Jamaica on this particular development. And then the other persons from the other side have said, hang on a second, that is from Portia Simpson Miller period time, whereby she actually had this vision for this. And therefore, there's this standoffish now, whereby the bigger picture is not being focused on. But what is being focused on is the petty, minor, simplistic, polit part of politics, tribalistic thinking. That's just my view as much as possible. Many people disagree, many people agree. And that is what seems to be happening here with Trump. But however, at the same time, I am mindful, being not an American and being not in America, and I mean not privy to what is happening there in the, 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 the hub of the White House, in the hub of the Pentagon, with what information they know, with the CIA, what they know. I don't know. So, but he said, going against advice from European allies, he said to reimpose economic sanctions. But really and truly, his purpose and sole responsibility is to the American people, is to protect the safety of America. Iran said it was preparing to start uranium enrichment, key for making both nuclear energy and weapons. So what Trump is actually saying is this. He's saying is that, what he's saying is that, listen, this does not actually change anything. And he may have a point because Iran can actually continue. So spare me one second. Iran, Iran can continue to build their, their, their um, nuclear stuff. This is in comparison to Kim Jong-un, who said he's going to stop this whole thing. Um, with his um, test and all those sort of ways, how he's going to build his nuclear weapon. But Iran, President Russian said, the US has announced that it doesn't respect its commitments. I have ordered the Atomic Energy Organization of Iran to be ready to start the enrichment of uranium at industrial levels. Maybe Trump at a point. He said he waited for a few weeks to speak to the Allies and the other signatures to the nuclear deal first. If we achieve the deal's goal in cooperation with other members of the deal, it will remain in place, he said. Right? So called. So therefore, so what is happening there in, in that is that there is a power struggle going on. And it seems to be that uh, Trump is actually going at all these things bit by bit. There must be a bigger plan. There must be something, you know, right? So he's dealing with Kim Jong-un, dealing with all those things. And the question you've got to ask yourself is, but why America have all these weapons? And why can't others have their weapons as well? That's a question for you. Moving on quickly, before I wrap up, Kanye West, still in the news. Surprisingly, after a week of this um, 400 years of slave, um, one is a choice. You're seeing lots of support coming. You're seeing whereby his Twitter and his following has increased astronomically as much as possible. But what I see as the, the bigger picture of this is that people are actually saying, hang on a second, he has a right to speak and he must be able to speak. Uh, some people uh, are angry about it. Um, and and, and as, a, as a result of that, they are actually um, peed off by Ken West. Um, and one of the one of the things about Ken West is that many people are saying is that many people are saying that they don't support Ken West anymore and they're not going to buy his video or whatever. They haven't bought Jack, <laughs> you know. Listen, I have no problem or issues with Ken West. I've got issues how he actually worded his um, his comments. But actually, after watching the How on Forty Five video of him and Chambalari or whatever that guy name, 
um, from the Breakfast Club and watching the other interviews and watching the other interaction with him and T.I., listening to what a um, um, few other persons said, listening to some of those who are against and some of support of it, I, I, I've i drawn a conclusion that it is a discussion that is worth having. But one has got to be open-minded and one has got to actually be deep thinking to understand the depths of it. Some may say it's crazy, but guess what? Many great minds are deemed to be crazy because sometimes there's a thin line between craziness and genius. And that brings me right into this one. Um, you know, this, this, this takes me straight into childish Gambino. Genius at work. Music videos spark debate. This is America. Right? So I, I, and I kid you not, right now, Childish Gambino is deemed to be awesome, artistic. Some of the words that I'm hearing describing Childish Gambino, Gambino's, um, Donna Glover, is some of the same words which were used to describe Canoes, genius. I, watch, I was watching um, a lot of um, old footages of Kanye West when he was actually, um, you know, practicing Diamonds Forever with the, with the opera and he's going through all these different steps and listening to what he said. I said, this guy's a genius. Looking at Charlie Gambino and watching the whole video. And funny for me, I tend to always watch things in the background a lot when I'm watching movies. Sometimes I say to my wife, I say to her, do you think those persons in the background are actors or not? Because I'm always watching behind. When they see some good dance moves sometimes, you know the recent um, videos with uh, the Wakanda dance? I always tend not to watch the first person. But I tend to watch, if there are seven persons in the video, I'll watch those videos seven times and focus on each different person, not just the key person. Just look around the back. And I was watching the Gam Gambino thing, watching the dance. I found it a bit funny. Like, uh, you know, it's a bit... It's a bit um, sleazy the type of that that's just me it looks a bit sleazy you know in a way like and uh, slimy <laughs> so i was more sort of looking at behind um donald glover behind Charles gambino just looking behind all different person the children dancing the gun shot and um the the in the church and all those sort of things and just sort of analyzing it for myself as much as possible so i see the sort of chaos and the craziness which is happening in the background and how the front of it you can be completely distracted. And that is exactly what is really happening, whereby there are many distractions which are placed in the front, where the focus is on. Like Kanye West for argument say, that is now placed in the front and it's somewhat like a childish Gambino, Gamb um, Gambino. He's at the front there and everybody's focusing on that. Those simple words, powerful words, which, which, which can affect lots of persons emotionally and deep. But also one misses out on the bigger picture behind the scenes. What is really? What is he saying? What does this mean? Am I in slavery? Am I mentally locked up? Am I free? Do I have choice? Do I don't I have choice? And those are the questions. You know? So two genius I see. People might hate the comparison of what I'm saying with Charles Gambino, Danny Glover, and Mr. Um, uh, uh, Kanye West. And I said, Mr. Kanye West, respect is due. You know, you see, because as I said before, and one of my latest videos yesterday was that we've got to be careful that we're not caught up into the hyena pack. And the hyena pack is when you look at hyenas, and if you watch those movies with hyenas, and even with um, um, that... That Simbird, you know, that, that, that play there, I think is, I um, forget what, it, what the play is in the cartoon, whereby the hyenas will come, but they tend to always come in packs, but they always seek for those who have a weakness. They always seek for that prey, that animal who is actually limping, can't move, and they come in for the kill, they crowd in, but they come together as packs. It's like the crowd crucify jesus to a certain extent they come in crowds not individual you know and i bet if someone said of us hear you hear you wait a second what are we doing everybody would stop and think and say, what are we doing you know it's a crowd 
the hyena pack. Let's not be a part of the hyena pack. Let's not crucify our brothers. Uh, let's just build them and let's just encourage them as much as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Silburn Sidil and I approve this video. And smashing, smashing, I'm proud of myself. I think we cracked, we cracked it in, um, we cracked it in, uh, what should I say, in, in, we cracked it in one hour. So, you know, thank you for joining, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope um, what, what I said resonates with yourself. And please share your, your views as well. And um, I'll be back again. I, I, I will not be putting out sometimes the topics, which I'll be talking about at times, but I'll be coming out and straight at 10 o'clock. Um, most nights, as much as I can, even if it's for 30 seconds, but I keep the pressure on as much as possible. And, uh, and you know, like, subscribe to Silver. Uh, what I'll do at most times, I will also upload these videos um, on YouTube, where, because many people I realize are leaving Facebook, um, um, some people are saying to post the links on Snapchat. So I've got a couple of persons who are going to do that as well. Um, there's the Instagram, there's a Twitter, there's a Facebook, there's a YouTube as much as possible. So watch it out. And, but watch those videos. Watch those videos that I did with the bike. You even see my daughter on a bike. Vroom, vroom, vroom. You know, with those guys which were in uh, Catford just over the weekend. And, um, and yeah, that's it. So peace out. All the best. Thank you very much. Yulo, Yolanda, um, Alison Bristol, um, Lorna Foster, Matt Birch, Kenisha Greaves, Patricia, Jen, Jen, Jenny, um, Yolanda, First Lady, Paula, Mike Lawrence, um, Delroy, Dominique, Blessings, Kim Roy, Instagram Land, Twice the Twins, All the Best, Simone, Paula Prenegas, um, even saying hi to myself and logged in somewhere else, um, Moral, Josh Daniels, and have a good night and peace out on all the best. Thank you. Cheers.